Hello, welcome to Learning with Lisa. I am Lisa Schaller. I have a bachelor's and a master's in construction management. I've been a teacher at Bowling Green State University for 14 years in construction management. Hi guys, my name is CJ Pierce. I am a student at Northwest State Community College in the Visual Communications Graphic Design Program. I've actually got to have, over the last five years or so, some experience in the construction field, and I'm excited to get to learn a little bit from Lisa. This is going to be cool working together on these oh, projects. Sure. We're going to have a blast doing this. All right, the first thing we have to do, and we know it's boring and dry, but we have to do the safety stuff. By the way, you might want to zip your coat up. That's a safety hazard. Anything flying or loose like that. Also, you can see I have my sleeves pulled up. Pull your sleeves up. Anything that can get caught in saw blades, drill bits, anything like that is safety. Second most important thing is safety glasses when you're working with equipment or tools. These are the kind that I can put right on, take my glasses off. CJ has a pair because he has glasses on. We have over the glass safety glasses. That way he is still protected and his eyes are protected. Another couple things that we need for safety for sure, hard soled shoes. And if you're working underneath somebody or working with over your head, a hard hat is a mandatory thing to save your noggin. The other thing I'd like to bring out here for you, always have access to know where your fire extinguisher is. Can happen at any time. Got to have it and you got to know where it's at. The other thing I always carry around here is bottles of water in case something splashes in your eye sawdust gets in your face you can wash it out real quick right away and make sure you have a first aid kit nearby for your basic safety stuff no horse play in the shop no loud music you got to listen to your tools so you can hear what they're doing if something's binding you got to be able to pull it and turn it off the other major thing is know where your electrical panel is so you can turn the power down immediately if you have to i can unplug my cord real quick from my power table if something goes wrong. What is this, CJ? Well, this is a chop saw, Lisa. This is a chop saw, you are correct. It's also called a miter saw, double bevel, double miter saw, many different names for it. This, I have all the safeties locked on it right now. Release the safety and it can slide back and forth. Release the other safety, you can lift that up. What this saw does, you can put wood in here, pull it up and saw back with it. Never cross your arms when using this because you can hurt yourself if you would do something like that. Like this. Put your bigger piece of wood in here, bring it out before the wood and then cut all the way through, okay? When we fire it up, show you how to use the release lever on it and when to start it and when to stop it. The nice thing about this tool, it is a bevel. Loosen that safety. I can turn this angle like this where I would use it if I would wanna cut this piece of wood at an angle like this. Awesome. Safe for a lid for a birdhouse. You need that angle so yeah. the water runs off of it. You can cut it perfectly like here. Super cool. Safety features back in line on this. Safety glasses always, fingers back away from it. Do not wear gloves on this. You can get a good chance of getting your finger blades, fingers caught in the blade with gloves on it. Yeah. Perfect. And now for this big piece of equipment. CJ, what is this? That's a drill press, Lisa. That is a drill press. <laughs> CJ, what do we use a drill press for? I'm gonna guess it's for drilling holes. Bingo, you're right. This tool has a lot of moving parts on it. The head spins very, very fast, so keep your fingers away. Safety glasses always. 
Bring this down, you can drill holes in it. There's many adjustments that you can alter this for the piece of material you are drilling through, whether it be wood or metal, or it's great for plexiglass as well. You can raise and lower the plate to what you need to do with this tool. CJ, you got any questions on the drill press? I don't have any questions, Lisa, thank you. Now the next power tool. CJ, what is this called? Okay, this one I have no clue about at all. This is a flat planer. What this would do, and safety again, eyeballs, definitely have safety glasses on. Take a rough piece of wood, and you would run it through here, change your thickness for whatever thickness you want to plane off of here. A good example of that is this old piece of hardwood that's very rough sawn. You yep. want to make it smooth like that piece of wood. You would run it through this planer here is what it does. Sweet. It shoots all of the shavings out of the back side of it. So you stay away from the back side, run it from the front side. Again, this will be bolted down to the table as well. But the heads are very fast moving. It's a very loud tool as well. We're gonna use this later on too. Now the next big power tool we have is this one, CJ, do you know what this one is called? I'm pretty sure this is a joiner, Lisa. You are correct, this is a joiner. Do you know what we do with a joiner? So, we were talking about this a little bit ago off camera, and you said that it helps, like the, like the planer over there, helps work on the, like, smooth out the edges of pieces of wood. That is correct. The planer, you can't get the deep thickness in there, so you use a joiner for the edges or the ends, and it will take the wood off. Again, very sharp blade, turns at a very high rate of speed. What do we need to wear safety-wise with this tool? So we have to wear safety glasses for this one for sure. Correct, and no gloves. No gloves and stay away, another noisy tool. What other questions do you have about this tool, CJ? So Lisa, you mentioned we need to wear safety glasses and that this is a noisy machine. So when would we have to consider using ear protection when we're working with tools? You would consider ear protection when you're in a echoey type of a building. You still want to be able to hear your tools and hear the RPMs and how they're reacting to what you're using them for so you can tell if you're binding it up or putting too much pressure on it. So it depends on how sensitive your ears are to what tool you're using. Have another big power tool. CJ, do you know what this is called? This is a belt sander, Lisa. Have you used a belt sander before? I have used a belt sander before. Go, CJ, tell me about it. Awesome. So belt sanders, you can you can see here there's a big belt and it's a sander, so that's why they call it a belt sander. So yeah, so this is used for kind of smoothing down edges, smoothing down you know larger surfaces than you would use with just like a hand sander or something else like that. So like um, I was talking to Bryce, our producer, a little bit ago, and so growing up, he was working on projects um, for, for school and different stuff like that, and he loved using this to kind of work on like little uh, cars that you race down tracks. And so you take a piece of wood similar to this, probably something a little bigger, you just stick it on here and you kind of can get different edges, get different um, textures on the wood and stuff like that. So yeah, really great tool. I've, I've enjoyed using these in the past, really helps get projects going. So yeah, do you have anything to add to that, Lisa? What safety features do you need to worry about with this tool? So with this, first off, safety glasses, always. Um, so this, there are different, depending on the, the belt sander you're using, I know mine's a little different. Mine has a, a safety on it, so if it, if it kicks back on, you can pull it real quick and get it to turn off. This one has, uh, has a, a power switch and a couple other um, loosen and tightening things for keeping the belt on. 
I don't know a bunch because this is your tool, Lisa. So could you, could you tell us a little bit about uh, safety features on this particular one? On this one, again, you would bolt it down to the yep. table before you use that. The safety features, you do have a kickback here that you can automatically awesome. lock out, right? And again, your power switch. And I do have a bag to catch the shavings on the backside so they don't fly all over the place. Keep your eyes safe again. Awesome. Those are the safety features on this tool. Sweet. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, CJ. Okay, let's do a little wrap up. What did we learn today, CJ? So the big thing that you insisted on us making sure we had today were safety goggles. We still have ours right here in case we have to get back to work. The other stuff is making sure you keep track of what tools need gloves or ear protection because it can vary from tool to tool. Correct. And remember, these tools are powerful and they all involve electricity. It can kill. You have to be safe. You only have one set of hands, one set of eyes. Zip your shirt up too. You know that. Yeah, Lisa. Well, I know we have one more thing we want to share with the students. So what's, what's this right here? This is a manual for one of the tools. Make sure you read your manual, understand it, and it talks about everything to do with that tool, what all the controls are for. If you don't know your tool, you shouldn't be using that tool. Anything to end on? Not really, Lisa. Thank you for uh, teaching, a, teaching us a little bit about safety and about these power tools. Thank you for joining me today, oh, CJ. We had a blast. It was so much fun. Thanks. Thanks for watching Learning with Lisa. Stay safe, everybody.